Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. In last few episodes, we learned how to customize a grid head, a level head, and a section head. Today, in this episode, we are going to talk about how to customize an elevation mark. But before we talk about how to customize an elevation mark family, we must understand how an elevation really works. To demonstrate that, I'm going to create a new elevation. So let's go under View tab under Elevation and create a new elevation for our project. When I go near to one of my walls, you'll see how my elevation mark pointer really points towards that object. If I'm inside here, you'll see as soon as I go near one of the walls, the pointer changes its direction. Let's go ahead and place an elevation mark here. When I double click on the pointer, I will go to that elevation. So elevation mark has two parts. Elevation mark body, which is the circle here in this case, an elevation mark pointer, which is this triangle here. When I click on the pointer, you'll see where the elevation begins and how far are you able to see. This really depends on the clipping option that you have chosen. So far clipping, if it's clip or no clip, you will see an elevation that does not really clip. It will show you everything that comes in its way. If I clip it to, let's say, clip with or without line, you will have this option of choosing how far do you want to clip your elevation, how far do you want to see. When I click on my elevation mark body, you'll see that I have option of adding more pointers, which means that I can add more elevations in my project at the same position. So from here, let's say I want to click on this bottom pointer and you will see that one more elevation, 1C, has been added. When I double click on this pointer, I'm able to go to that particular elevation, 1C. Let's go back to the floor plan view. So this particular family contains an elevation mark body and four pointers, which means four different directions in which you can create an elevation using the same elevation mark. So if I create two more elevations, you'll see how 1A, 1B, 1C and 1D elevations are added into my project browser. So when you want to customize an elevation mark, you must customize two things, the elevation mark body and the pointers that the body contains. So when you go and try to create a new family for an elevation mark under annotations folder, you have two family templates, elevation mark body family template and elevation mark pointer. So we'll create the body family separately and the pointer family separately. We'll load the pointer into the body and body into the project. Let's begin with the body first. The note here says that you must create elements that represents the body of the elevation mark and you must create a pointer family separately and load it back into this body family before loading it into the project. The insertion point is at the intersection of these planes. Let's delete this note before using. I'm going to create a square shape elevation mark body. Let's say it is 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters square. So I'm going to start from 5 millimeters here all the way to 10 millimeters and back. And I'm going to trim my corners to create a 10 by 10 square. So this is my elevation mark body. Now let's go ahead and go under File New Family under Annotations folder. Click on Elevation Mark Pointer Family Template and I'm going to open this up. The note here says that place elements to represent the pointer element of an elevation mark. The direction of the pointer is vertical from the reference planes, which means we are only going to create one pointer here that points towards vertical direction. Insertion point is at the intersection of reference plane and we must delete this note before using. I'm going to create a filled region, a filled triangle to, to represent my elevation mark pointer. Let's make it 10 millimeters wide and about 30 degrees in its angle. And I'm going to trim both of this. I'm going to use fill region, which is solid fill in its fill pattern and black in color. If you don't have this fill region by default, you can always duplicate an existing one and create the pattern that you like. I'm going to say OK to this and finish it. So we have a solid filled triangle. I'm going to save it before loading it into my project. I'm going to call it elevation mark pointer filled triangle. Now I will load it into my 
family, not my project. I'm going to load it into my elevation mark body here. Let's place it somewhere around here and move it exactly to the point that we want. You can create one more symbol, place it here. And I'm going to move it exactly where I want. Each point of family that you put in your body is going to give you the possibility in the project to create a new elevation at that position. So you can create as many pointer families as you need. I'm going to select this pointer family and mirror it from this reference plane and this pointer family from this reference plane. So I have now four possibilities of creating four elevations from the same position. Now let's talk about the label text. If you want to report any particular parameter value, for example, detail number, sheet number, sheet name, or view name, you have the options of adding that within the body or in the pointer. Now, if you have a parameter that is common between all the elevations, you can add it in the body. But if you have a parameter that is different for each elevation, for example, it's view name or detail number, then that label has to be added into the pointer family. So let's go ahead in the pointer family and add a label text called view name. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. And I'm going to go in the edit type and ch change the background to transparent. You can also change the font, text size, or make it bold, italic, underline. That's up to you. I'm going to say OK to this. I'm going to save it and load it back into the project and override the existing version. So if they are all placed into the same sheet, then you can add a label of sheet number, for example, here in the elevation mark body. If they are placed on different sheets, this probably is not going to work. Let's save it before loading it into project. I'm going to call it elevation mark body square. And now let's load it into the project. Now let's apply this new family that we loaded into the project to our elevation. I'm going to select my elevation Go to the edit type and I'll see an elevation tag here. I'm going to further open this up and duplicate this elevation tag. I'm going to ca call it square. Now this elevation mark body underscore square is the family that I loaded. I'm going to select that and say OK to this. Now you see here that how we changed all our elevations to the family that we changed. Now here it looks a little bit congested here. So I'm going to select my elevation and change its name to 1A. Same thing you can do it with other elevations, 1B. So you see here how our label text, how our parameter reports the value of view name. And I'm going to make this 1C and 1D. Now looks much better. Now let's put these elevations on a sheet to see if the label text of sheet number really appears here. So I'm going to create a new sheet here and put one of my elevations here. So it reports the sheet number that that elevation is on. Now one tricky thing about putting a label text in elevation mark body is that it can only report a value that is common between all the elevations. So for example, when I create a new sheet here, and put my elevation 1c on a different sheet, you will see that how it does not display the sheet number in your elevation mark body because elevation 1a and 1c are on different sheets. As long as they are put on the same sheet, you'll see it continues to display the sheet number. So when you're choosing a label text for your elevation mark body, make sure that you're choosing a parameter whose value is going to remain the same for all the elevation pointers that are on that particular position. So to customize an elevation mark, we first create an elevation mark body, then we create an elevation mark pointer. We loaded the pointer into the body and created multiple instances of the pointers where we needed them. And we loaded the whole combination into our project. So that's how you customize an elevation mark. I hope you enjoyed today's video and the next episode we are going to talk about how to customize a north arrow symbol. And guess what? We are also going to make the north arrow parametric by adding an angle parameter to it. So please make sure that you subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next episode.